Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing our series, Four Weeks of Famous Philosophers. In this video, we will be looking at Epicurus, champion of happiness, inventor of the problem of evil, and founder of the garden. Now, Epicurus was a philosopher that lived in ancient Greece in the 3rd century BCE. The study of Epicurus's philosophies had a significant following as long as 600 years after his death. As the founder of one of the principal schools of philosophy in Athens, his ideas touched the lives of many. Some of his arguments, such as the problem of evil, and his arguments against the fear of death are still very influential today. We recently did a video on Epicurus's philosophy entitled, What is Epicureanism? If you're curious about some of his specific positions and arguments, I would highly suggest you check that video out now. So instead, what we're going to focus on here much more is his life. Now, Epicurus was born into poverty and sickness. He was sick and in pain for most of his life. His family was exiled from their home after a war. Unlike many of the famous Greek philosophers, he spent little time in Athens until he established his school. In fact, he spent all but two of his first 35 years of life in Asia. When Epicurus did return to Athens, he had a group of followers with him. They purchased a property for a school that would be known as Hokepos, or the Garden. It was not lavish as the title The Garden or this kind of Epicurean idea might give you the sense, but rather it was very simple and ascetic. Uniquely among philosophical schools, the garden admitted women as well as men, and it even admitted a slave. Epicurus preached a doctrine of happiness and friendship, and he lived in the pursuit of peace and freedom from pain as much as he lived in pursuit of pleasure. It's often conceived that Epicurus or the Epicureans were hedonists that just wanted to take, 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 and have all of these pleasures. But Epicurus was as much focused on relieving pain and having peace as he was having pleasure. And realizing that he spent much of his life in very significant pain may give you some sense of why that was. Epicurus died in agonizing pain at the age of 72. Even though he was in torment, he was at peace and dictated a heartfelt letter to a friend on his deathbed, exemplifying the peace and happiness that he spoke of in his philosophy, and really the lack of fear at the prospect of death. When he died, he left the garden to trustees to continue the school and freed all of his slaves. Here's the letter that he wrote to his friend on his deathbed. I have written this letter to you on a happy day to me, which is also the last day of my life. For I have been attacked by a painful inability to urinate and dysentery so violent that nothing can be added to the violence of my sufferings. But the cheerfulness of my mind, which comes from the recollection of all my philosophical contemplation, counterbalances all these afflictions. And I beg you to take care of the children of Metrodorus in a manner worthy of the devotion shown by the young man to me and to philosophy. Therefore, I give you Epicurus, champion of happiness, inventor of the problem of evil, and founder of the garden. In the next video, we will continue looking at some of the schools of philosophy outside of the academic Plato-Aristotle tradition. We'll be looking at a Stoic. We're going to advance in time a little bit to the Roman period. We will look at Seneca. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and watch a new video every single day for the whole month of October about a famous philosopher. Stay skeptical, everybody.